So, welcome back students. So, we are continuing with our previous lecture. We discussed the acetic acid production route. Uh, mainly, we discussed the reactions and also we also saw the how the homogeneous catalysis evolved and what is the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis with examples. We also, also discussed the uh, disadvantages of homogeneous catalysis and then we went on to discuss acetic acid. Today, we will take up the acetic acid production. So, we discussed in the previous lecture the conventional production method, but we will go with the what we called as carbonylation route. So, the today's lecture that is why it pertains to the methanol carbonylation, carbonylation for acetic acid production. So, what I will discuss is the methanol carbonylation. So, as the name suggests, the methanol is the raw material okay, and along with carbon monoxide, these are the raw materials. So, it means that a carbonyl group is inserted within the methanol molecule. So, what is the thermodynamics, the reactions concerned? Then we will take the acetic acid production, specially we have discussed the three method, main methods, first the BASF method, then uh, which is now obsolete because the BASF method, if you recall, it uses a cobalt and a iodide based catalyst system. So, there are a lot of byproducts formed, so that is why it is becoming uh, obsolete. Then uh, we, there was an improvement in the catalyst, there was rhodium based catalyst, iridium based catalyst. So, all this led to some processes which we discussed that is the um, cativa process that which is developed by BP which we will discuss, British Petroleum and then the Monsanto process. So, we will discuss these two processes in detail, the flow sheet especially with flow sheet, but prior to flow sheet we will also discuss the reaction mechanism, how catalyst actually works. So, before we go to this, let us see the methanol carbonylation. So, in the right side, we have a plot. The plot is for the methanol equilibrium conversion to acetic acid. So, for example, if we take a equimolar feed of methanol and carbon monoxide, that is 1 moles per mole, then using it as a feed, what will be the conversion? Now, you see, we have said in the earlier slides, in the earlier lecture, that it is an exothermic process. So, if it is an exothermic process, so obviously a low temperature is preferred, so which is true. If you see at a low temperature, the temperature, this uh, conversion is almost complete at a 400 Kelvin, but still, so you have seen, we have plotted that various diagrams, the thermodynamic conversion, okay, it is not kinetic limitations does not uh, evolve here, we are only talking about the thermodynamic based conversion. So, it means we varied the pressure from 1 bar to 30 bar to 300 bar and we saw that uh, the variations and why we need such high pressures. So, both temperature and pressure influences the equilibrium conversion of methanol to acetic acid, this is the first point. The methanol equilibrium conversion is nearly complete. So, what was the condition of the process? If you recollect, it was near about 500 kelvins, and pressure is around 30 bar or so. So, even at this condition, it is almost complete. But if you see conversion is complete even at atmospheric pressure, that is what no. So, if it is 1 bar, even if you see, if I want to conduct it at this much pressure, let us say the pressure of around 550, 570, uh, I will be able to complete the reaction. Then why do not we do it at 1 bar? Why do we want a high pressure? There are many reasons for it. One reason is it helps us the high pressure to retain the reaction mixture in the liquid phase and to develop and maintain the catalyst in its active form the reaction is conducted at elevated pressure. So, it means that we need to keep the liquid mixture in a liquid state, first point. Second is, we also need to maintain the catalyst in its active form. It has been seen that at high pressures, it is remains in the active form, but as you lower down the pressure, the catalyst will deactivate that information is not available in this plot. So, that is what the kinetic part comes into picture. So, it is calculated or it is conducted at higher pressure. Now, the catalyst complex here, it is not stable at low carbon monoxide pressure because what happens is at low pressure, there will be carbon monoxide and methanol. So, methanol, okay, you did carbonylation, but if there is some carbon monoxide available, what they will do, they will actually react with the catalyst at low pressures, I am not at high pressures. 
they will then precipitate out the catalyst. So the purpose for which the catalyst was inserted, the catalyst was inserted into the reaction mixture that actually does not help because if your ligand gets consumed, the catalyst gets removed. So if the catalyst gets removed then it means that you are going to, you know, you, uh, you do not get it in its use, fine. So it means that is why we, it is not stable at low carbon monoxide pressure. So the methanol carbonylation. In this route, what you do is you have methanol, some iodide is added into the system. So the iodide is a corrosive hydrogen iodide, it is an important component of the catalytic system. So here the first reaction which occurs is methanol reacts with hydrogen iodide to form methyl iodide plus water. So this is an exothermic reaction. So there is no free hydrogen iodide. So now you may ask, and okay, I want I am conducting this experiment. So what if there is iodide present because it is highly corrosive? So issue is there is no free hydrogen iodide because the iodine if it is present in the form of iodide rapidly will interact with all the methanol to produce methyl iodide. So there will be methyl iodide but no free iodide, okay? that is very important. The production of methyl iodide because once the methyl iodide is formed, it will initiate the catalytic cycle in which the carbonylation occurs. So it means this methyl iodide reacts with the carbon monoxide to form methyl carbonyl iodide. Okay? So these are the first two steps. Now then what happens? Now this methyl carbonyl iodide is transformed into acetic acid through this reaction. Okay? So then again here HI is evolved. So this HI thus there is no free iodide and it circulates within the system. So the heat of enthalpy is 15.6 kilojoule, pretty high. So the reaction rate in the rhodium catalyst, so in the Monsanto process is a rhodium catalyst. So the rhodium catalyst, uh, if, I, if I want to draw that rhodium catalyst is something like this, uh, just rhodium and uh, both sides it will be carbonyl group and in here you will have iodide, here it will be iodide, something like that. This is ligand, so metal is rhodium in the center and then you have ligands across 4. So this rhodium catalyzed Monsanto process is only proportional to the amount of methyl iodide and rhodium. Now look at this reaction. So it is independent of the starting concentration, is not it? So it is independent of how much of methanol or how much of carbon monoxide you add as a reaction mixture. Okay, it is only dependent upon the catalyst concentration and the initiator that is methyl iodide. So we call this as a zero order reaction. So zero order reaction means the rate of production of acetic acid is independent of the concentration of the reactants. So this you might be able to compare with your chemical engineering what you have read the zero order reaction. So this is one such example of zero order reaction. So it means if it is independent of the methanol and the starting components, the output rate remains constant. Okay? The output rate will remain constant regardless of the level of conversion. So it means if I use a small volume continuous stirred, so if I want to make use of the stirred tank reactor, you can use it because it does not matter. So you keep on a continuous reactor, keep on pulling in more reacting mixture. But only thing is you have to separate out the catalyst media. So larger conversions can be obtained in a smaller volume. So that is what the purpose is. The rhodium based Monsanto process is adopted or it is developed in such a manner it can produce acetic acid at a large concentration. So now let us see the mechanism. This is very important. This is the catalytic cycle for the Monsanto acetic acid process. Now this is the first reaction. Okay. Methanol reacts with hydrogen iodide to form methyl iodide. So this is, uh, you know, we have pictorially depicted. So here you have IHI here reacts with methanol oxide, methanol. So methyl iodide is formed. So this is the catalyst media. This is the catalyst, rhodium based catalyst. So you have the metal in the center, carbonyl group and iodide along it. So it reacts with methyl iodide. So these steps, if you see there is an inner circle. So this circle, these are intermediates, intermediate steps of the reaction. So this is very important to know how this catalyst performs. Why? Because as you know, you have studied in reaction engineering, catalyst does not take part in the reaction. So it has to be again getting back to its original 
form. So that is what the entire cycle closes up here. So if you see the methyl group is first inserted. So this is the methyl migration. So we call this methyl migration. So it this process where methyl group is inserted we call this as the oxidative addition process and this is considered to be the red determining step or the slowest step. So what happens then there is a rearrangement we call this as a methyl migration. So the methyl is migrated. So if you see here earlier how many rings are there 6. So there is 6 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 because this methyl has come and uh, you have another iodine coming in. So because one ion comes and attaches to the rhodium. So these dotted lines if you are not well versed with chemistry it means that they are behind your plane and your black ones are in front of the plane. So this iodine gets attached one of the iodine and one of the methyl gets also attached. So you have 6 members across the metal center. This rearrangement this rearrangement is called the methyl migration it forms a penta coordinated acyl complex. What is acyl? The acyl is this group CH3CO group. So this CH3CO group gets attached. So see this CO3 comes up here. So this is that CH3CO group gets being attached here. Okay. So now then the CO is added second step, second reaction, first reaction, second reaction. Second reaction how it comes? Methyl iodide so it is already there. So now we are not writing what are the intermediate inside because the catalyst medium is there. So now when it takes up this carbon monoxide CO, then this CO will react with this part, this pentavalent part to form this type of structure where another CO gets attached on top of rhodium. Okay. So then what happens in the next step? Obviously this is not much stable this table. So actually the entire catalyst cycle we call it, it concludes when this acetyl iodide. So this comes out and it goes back to its original catalyst form and the remaining thing comes out in the form of methyl carbonyl iodide. This methyl carbonyl iodide finally it stops going any further the catalyst process is stopped when it reacts with water to form acetic acid this is the reaction. So what is the slowest step that is the rate determining step, rate determining step is this one. So if I, if I mark a star here this is the formation of this addition process, the oxidative addition process is the rate determining step. Okay, so moving ahead, now we have seen the Monsanto process. Now let us see the BP process that is the Cativa process, British Petroleum, huh? the Cativa acetic acid process. So we have three equations, equations are same, catalyst different. Again you have methanol reacting with hydrogen iodide to form methyl iodide and water. So you see the arrow is here, so water goes out, so methyl iodide, here the catalyst is different, it is iridium based catalyst, earlier it was rhodium. So overall the metal ligand structure is similar, you have carbon monoxide, iodine, it reacts with methyl iodide to form again this pentavalent structure. So you have, uh, sorry not pentavalent, this is a 6 member structure. But the only difference is this is not the slowest step. So if I have written here just have a pay attention to this line. It is similar to Monsanto but the oxidative addition of methyl iodide to the iridium center is much faster. In the previous process it was slower so that is why it was rate determining. It is faster than the equivalent reaction with rhodium. Rhodium means the Monsanto ones. Thus it is no longer the rate determining same. This you should remember. So it means then what is the one which is the fastest, the fastest, the, sorry the slowest, the slowest step is the subsequent methyl migration insertion to form an acyl complex which is relatively slow with iridium. So this will involve the substitution of iodide ion with carbon monoxide. Okay. So it means uh, this is this process. So now what happens in this process the carbon monoxide comes here. So if you remember in the earlier process the carbon monoxide was attached here but here the carbon monoxide comes here and it replaces one of the iodine atom. So this is the reaction the methyl iodide to form carbon monoxide and it forms CH3COI. This CH3 will again rearrange and this forms this acyl group. So this is the acyl group.
So this presence of this acyl group, this particular step, so if I write one to this step, this step is the slowest step and it is the deuterium mining step. Then again it regains its original structure, so this iodine is again supplied from outside. So what happens, this iodine if supplied, it will form this reaction will occur, methyl carbonyl iodide will react with water to finally, so it will, so this rearranges, iodine is coming here. So what it will do, it will form this methyl carbonyl iodide and then again the catalytic cycle stops when it reacts with water to form methanol and hydrogen iodide, okay. So this is the way the reaction proceeds. So overall reaction rate is given by, now this is not a, you know, the zero order reaction, the, the reaction is something like this. So it, it is a, now here you have the starting component that is carbon monoxide. Uh, what happens is, uh, if you can take out this iodine Suppose if you can take out this iodine, then your rate of the production of methane, rate of production of acetic acid is more. So that is what it is. You are see you are consuming iodine here. So you take out this, try to remove as much of iodine as possible so as to increase the rate of production of acetic acid. Okay. So I've written some point, the same figure. Due to the inverse relationship between ionic iodide concentration and reaction rate. So this is that ionic iodide concentration reaction rate. Eliminating the ionic iodide enhances the reaction rate. So to eliminate this ionic, uh, how do you eliminate it? That's why they use a term called promoter. What are promoters? This carbonyl iodide complex, okay. This carbonyl iodide complex such as this one, okay. Ruthenium CO4 I2. So this is one of the carbonyl complex. So this is the catalyst part of catalyst, no, not only catalyst, this is with the iridium one, iridium plus, so if I, I do not want to write the entire, it becomes very complex, so it is iridium plus ruthenium, so iridium is in this form, in this form iridium and ruthenium is in this form, so if the ruthenium is in this metal ligand form, what it will do, it will decrease the concentration of iodide, hence increasing the reaction rate, so that is where the research lie. So they have come up with a catalyst promoter which will take care of and uh, eliminate the iodide ions. So it means it also plays an important role because if there is more amount of iodine then it will form complexes such as iridium carbonyl I4 and iridium carbonyl 3 I4, uh, I3, sorry carbonyl 3 I4. So what it will do is that these are inactive form of catalyst. So this structure if you see, if you see these structures this is different than these structures. So it means these are inactive form of the catalyst, so there is no point if there is more of iodine. So what you do is, because you need only two atoms of iodine, but here you see there's four atoms of iodine, four atoms of iodine and one atom, one uh, carbonyl group. So that's why this promoter is used, ruthenium, so as to consume the excess iodine from the mixture. So now you see why promoters are used, why cativa is an improved process as compared to Monsanto. Okay. So looking up this, we now move ahead and uh, actually study the process flow sheet. So this is the process flow sheet, we will see first Monsanto, then we will go to the Cativa. So the Monsanto process, we will go step by step. So if you see this is methanol carbonylation, this is the process flow sheet. The carbon monoxide and methanol are delivered to a CSTR containing the catalyst that has been sparched. Okay, so in this is first step, carbon monoxide and methanol is added, the temperature and pressure are written here. I told you why 30 bar because the catalyst medium needs to be active, it should not deactivate. Huh? So it means we have to conduct at higher pressure. This is a CSTR, a jacketed CSTR, so it is parched. The reaction occurs in the liquid phase at moderate circumstances. Carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So after the reaction occurs, so if you see this particular place, this carbon dioxide CO2 plus hydrogen, these are formed. So these carbon dioxide and hydrogen, these are non-condensable byproducts of the water gas shift process, okay, which are evacuated from the reactor. So this is sent back to the reactor and sent to a scrubber. So first is the reaction occurring and you have the products called carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So this is the first step. So I write here 1. Now let us go what happens in the 
next flashed vessel. So, this is what happens. So, now the vent gas is blended with off gas. Now, the vent gas means I am talking about this gas. So, this vent gas is carbon dioxide and hydrogen. It is mixed with the gases coming out from the light ends and passed through a scrubber to recover volatile and the poisonous methyl iodide. Now, there may be a high chance that methyl iodide or hydrogen iodide may come out from this. So, it may mix with this the methyl iodide may be also be here. Then what happens is it will gets mixed with CO2 H2 and when they are sent off these are called as off gas. It is sent to a scrubber where these particular components are actually stripped from the gas. So, this is all about the upper part, the upper product. Now, what happens to the lower part where the actually the products are formed? So, you have a pressure releasing valve. So, this is the PRV pressure releasing valve. The liquid is withdrawn from the reactor and introduced into a flash vessel. So, you must be knowing what is flash. Flash means we have a high temperature stream and you just throw it open into some low temperature area. So, it means that you are flashing the gases and liquids separate out. So, when this does we have this flash vessel. So, liquid is now withdrawn from the reactor into the flash vessel resulting in a gas and liquid phase. So, you have gas here, you have liquid here. What are these gas and liquid? Let us discuss the next slide. So, I will stay this is step 2. Okay. So, now if you see this we have seen step 1, this is step 2. Now, this is gas coming out. The liquid phase containing, now let us first consider on the liquid phase. This is a liquid phase. What is this liquid phase? The liquid phase containing the dissolved catalyst complex. So, it contains a dissolved catalyst complex. So, this is again recycled back to the reactor. The remaining gas phase contains a majority of acetic acid products. So, it will have mostly acetic acid CH3COH. Okay. Along with it, it will form, it will have water, it will have methyl acetate, methyl acetate also and methyl iodide. So, now when this is taken, so we call the distillation train. So, all these if you see these are all distillation train, all have this particular purpose. Let us see what are this purpose. So, this was the step 2 and then finally, this is step 3. So, let us go ahead and see step 4. So, light ends column. Now, we, we are considering on step 3 only. Light end column, what it is do? It has this methyl acetate, methyl iodide, acetic acid and a portion of water. Some amount is recycled back into the reactor. So, you see some amount of this portion is recycled back into the reactor. There is a purpose for it. As a side stream, the acetic acid, the wet acetic acid is extracted from this column and supplied into the drying column where a dry acetic is extracted as the bottom product. So, it is a drying column. I mean dry means you take out the water. So, this water is sent back to the reactor. So, the water which is coming out from the top is sent back to the reactor. Now, this light ends because this light end means you do not need this methyl acetate, methyl iodide, we require a certain amount of water. As I told you, this requires almost some amount of water. So, as to make the catalyst active because if it is not, if the some, if the water getting reduced here, what happens will that the, all the carbon monoxide will get consumed and the catalyst may deactivate. So, that is why a part of the aqueous mixture is sent back to the reactor along with the methyl acetate or methyl iodide. So, methyl iodide anyway it will be used up in the reactor. So, when you send a portion of the water some amount of acetic acid also goes along with water because they are soluble in each other. So, let us see what happens. So, this is we the step 4 the drying column. So, the reactor overheads comprising a mixture of acetic acid and water are recycled. Now, we have taken away all the light ends. Okay. We have taken away most of the CH3 Ci plus, plus catalyst and the light ends plus methyl acetate. All these are again sent back. These are light end column. But some amount of acetic acid is also sent back along with water. 
So, a mixture of around acetic acid, I told you know water is required, 35 concentration and water is recycled back to the reactor. Because a constant amount of acetic acid in water is circulated within this, within this the constant amount is circulated in this region. If you see, this is the region, constant amount is circulated in this region, so as it allows the catalyst to remain active. Okay, the reason is why they are circulated in this region of reactor and lighted to enable the catalyst system to be active enough. Because if it is not such, so there are two aspects as I told you, one is pressure, so you see 30 bar pressure, another is liquid medium. So, these two are very essential, otherwise what will happen, the catalyst will deactivate and your carbonyl oxide may form or get out of the catalyst system as precipitate, you want, for that you increase the pressure. So, then the final step dry acetic acid here is delivered to the product column, so it is delivered here, so we call it the fifth step from which the heaviest byproduct. So, now the propionic acid the heaviest byproduct has recovered as the bottoms and in the top product you have acetic acid. So, this actually completes the entire flow sheet. So, this is what the Monsanto process is all about. Okay? So, you should remember two things, you should have a sufficient amount of recycled stream having at least 35 percent acetic acid and a high pressure to keep the catalyst active, catalyst system active. So, just want to reiterate the fact why we want to uh, circulate that water because the low carbon monoxide pressure, if the pressure in the flash vessel, the bottoms which are coming out in the flash vessel, if the pressure is low, it may le lead to the loss of CO ligands. So, you have this CO ligands now, this rhodium. So, this CO ligand may be lost, lost of CO ligand and it will lead to the precipitation of insoluble rhodium species such as rhodium iodide. So, if this is goes away, if it precipitates out, so you will be left with rhodium iodide. So, this is not suitable. Further, this it may be precipitated because you have already have carbon monoxide in the mixture. So, that is why relatively substantial amount of water, 10 to 15 percent water must be retained in the process to maintain the stability and the solution of the rhodium catalyst. So, excess water, what it does, excess water will inhibit the below two reactions. So, what are the two reactions? It will just inhibit, first is the production of methyl acetate, the second is the production of dimethyl ether. So, this dimethyl ether is now our government is focusing source of fuel. So, but anyway in this part you do not need this dimethyl ether. So, because if you have water here, so you know the forward reaction would not happen. So, if it is more and more concentrated in methanol then this reaction may happen. So, the formulation of DME is inhibited, further formulation of methyl acetate is also inhibited because again here you have water. So, you add more of water so that the reactants they cannot react and form methyl acetate. So, this is the purpose of circulating water in the reactor medium. But then there is a downside to this Monsanto process, what is the downside? If you add water then this water gas shift reaction will occur. So, what is this water gas shift reaction? What it will do? It will consume all CO. If you have water, CO will get consumed One form CO2 and H2O. So, this is also we need to see because this is a disadvantage. But, uh, is he, but so it means that it is economically advantageous to perform the carbonylation process at low water concentration. So, if you want to perform the carbonization, you perform it at lower water concentration so that the stability of the catalyst can be maintained, okay? you conduct it at low carbonyl concentration. That is why this cativa process came into the picture. So, what is the way forward for a lower water concentration? Re along with lower water concentration, replace the rhodium catalyst. You replace the rhodium catalyst with a more durable iridium catalyst that is called the cativa process. Okay. So, you now we are coming slowly into the reason why this cativa process was actually initiated. So, this is the methanol carbonization, the cativa process, uh, it was licensed by BP. Now, again I will show in steps, the first step reactor is not physically state. So, if you see it is uh, not a normal CSTR, it is not physically state. Instead, 
This is a new term jet loop reactor where contents are combined by the jet mixing effect of the cooling loop. So cooling loop is this. So when you have the cooling loop something coming out so it is cooled and then it is mixed with methanol and the gas and it is parched at the top. The reaction conditions remain similar okay. So this is what the reactor heart of the process looks like okay. So this is what earlier it was a simple CSTR in Monsanto and here it is a jet loop reactor. Fine. So let us go step by step again like we did. So this is the second step. The first step we have seen this is the first step the reactor part. Then you have a secondary reactor this was not there in the Monsanto process. After the first reactor we call this a finishing plug flow reactor. A plug flow reactor is produced to improve the carbon monoxide conversion okay. Because uh, the rate of the reaction uh, is also dependent upon the uh, you have the carbon monoxide concentration in the numerator while iodine in the denominator. So you iodine is taken care by the catalyst the ruthenium promoter while carbon monoxide uh, you know you want, you want, one, one is the rate of the reaction. The rate of the reaction is already taken care because issue is okay fine uh, you can uh, we are removing iodine this is waiting con consumed because of the catalyst that purpose is solved. Now do we just leave the carbon monoxide just to have higher rate of reaction we are already having a higher rate of reaction because we are decreasing the denominator in a larger amount. So we also decrease the carbon monoxide also let us consume it. So if we want to consume it the uh, this is called the secondary reactor it means some amount of product comes out some amount of stream comes out or whatever unconverted part is there in the uppermost gaseous phase it is sent back to the reactor and it is in contact made in contact with the acidic acid which is actually formed in this reaction. So due to the stability of the iridium catalyst system at low carbon monoxide pressure due to the stability of the iridium catalyst at low carbon monoxide a substantially lower so uh, lower water content. Now issue is iridium catalyst in this case is stable at low carbon monoxide pressure. So that is why I told you so you if you recollect properly so we wrote the rate of the reaction CH rate of the production of acetic acid is equal to some rate constant then you have the iridium and then carbonyl carbon monoxide and then you have the iodine. So this was the rate of reaction. So fine this gets consumed by uh, ruthenium by the ruthenium based promoter. This carbon monoxide which is here the carbon monoxide that is why in order to make it see the rate of kinetics is fine you will get if you lower it down the rate will decrease but it will not decrease to that extent when iodine is consumed. So what you do is you have to consume this why because of the economical problem what is that economics the stability of the iridium catalyst at low carbon monoxide pressure exceptionally lower. So it means stability increases as you consume all the CO. So that is why in this region this particular this region the catalyst is highly stable because most of the CO is consumed here that is why this secondary reactor is also used okay. So let us go ahead and do the other things this next three steps. So the issue is here if you see fewer distillation columns are required and the light ends column and drying column. So earlier if you remember we have the light end column that is not here light end column. In the cativa process there is no light end column. So you can see the light end column and drying column together is the drying column in the cativa process. So in the same process you have the flash you have released you reduce the pressure flash it you remove the liquid part which is the catalyst rich stream send it back to the reactor the remaining gases are sent back along with the, the remaining acetic acid production acetic acid with water is sent back to the drying column. So here it is concentrated the remaining gases are taken out from the off gas 
okay. So, fewer distillation columns are required and the light ends column and drying column can be integrated into a single column. This is the advantage. So, less inventory is required. So, what are the key properties or the key outcomes of this process? Substance, substantially less propionic acid is produced than in the Monsanto process allowing the product column to be made smaller. Hydrogen iodide collusion is a critical issue in development of this carbonization method. Key to the success of both the Monsanto and Cativa process is their highly active catalyst system. Okay. They have a highly active catalyst system which permits operation under conditions that are significantly less severe than those of the BAS process. In BSF process we have seen uh, the pressures to be very high so, and the temperatures also to be very high. So, the temperature and pressure conditions are much more moderate as compared to BASF. So, this Monsanto Cativa process that is why they have been preferred over BASF. But the only issue in these two is requires a costly corrosion resistant construction materials such as Hastelloy C, titanium and even more other exotic materials. So, titanium is the mostly commonly used the you know the construction material, the reactor material. So, this is the methanol, these are some of the key points from this carbonylation method. So, I will stop here. So, what we have studied so far is the Cativa process and the Monsanto process. So, I like you to go to this Cativa process, the Matthew, the company, they will outline this process and also pre please, uh, you know, you take help of the previous lecture where I have given an article which describes this Cativa process, the catalytic procedure in detail. Then this, please go through this also which contains this article which contains the uh, reaction mechanism for methanol carbonylation using iridium catalyst. Thank you.